It's time for the 420 Radio News, covering the latest headlines in consumer cannabis, medical marijuana, and industrial hemp. Transcripts of 420 Radio News are available daily on our website at 420radio.org. Now, here's Russ Belleville with your marijuana headlines in 4 minutes and 20 seconds. This is your 420 Radio News for Monday, October 20th, 2014. Health officials in Colorado are calling for what is nearly a full ban on retail marijuana edibles in the state, just 10 months after the first recreational sales of marijuana began. Quote, Prohibit the production of retail edible marijuana products other than a simple lozenge hard candy or tinctures that are plainly labeled using universal symbols and that users can add to their products at home, end quote, Colorado Health Department officials wrote in their recommendation obtained by the Huffington Post. It continues, quote, hard candy lozenges would be manufactured in single 10 milligram dosages per lozenge and tinctures would be produced and labeled with dosing instructions such as two drops equals 10 milligrams, end quote. The Colorado Department of Revenue's Marijuana Enforcement Division, which oversees the state's marijuana industry, including the sales of edibles, will make the final rules based on the recommendations from the working group and state lawmakers after the 2015 legislative session. Florida's People United for Medical Marijuana raised over a half million dollars last week to promote their proposed constitutional amendment known as Amendment 2 that would legalize medical marijuana. In all, People United for Medical Marijuana has raised over $5 million and received almost $2 million in loans while spending almost $6 million as of October 10th. Much of the spending was needed to gather petition signatures to get on the ballot. The ballot initiative has run into well-funded opposition from a political committee known as the Drug-Free Florida Committee, which had raised about $4.74 million as of October 10th, almost all of it completely from Las Vegas casino tycoon Sheldon Adelson. North Texans in support of medical and recreational use of marijuana took to the streets in Dallas Saturday for a cannabis rally. Nearly 5,000 people were in, ten in attendance to help bring awareness to marijuana law reform efforts in Texas. Organizers for the event said the march allows people to come together and actively further the discussion about marijuana in the state. Quote, that's what I'm concerned with is getting sick people who are dying a chance to improve the quality of their life by ingesting some cannabis, said demonstrator Sean McAllister. McAllister also argued that weed can be taxed and regulated. The group says their primary focus now is supporting the medical use of marijuana in Texas. Demonstrators believe once that is accomplished, they can begin the push towards full legalization of marijuana in the state. A maker of breathalyzers used to detect blood alcohol has landed a quarter million dollar grant from the Colorado Office of Economic Development to develop a similar instrument to assess THC impairment. THC is the active ingredient in marijuana. The grant, which requires matching funds from the company, will allow LifeLock Technologies to speed development of a tool that will be marketed to law enforcement, corrections, schools, and workplaces. The grant flows through the Colorado Advanced Industries Accelerator Program. LifeLock, which is traded over the counter, makes evidential breath alcohol testers for use by law enforcement and the workplace. Last week, we learned that two pot shops in Vancouver, Washington, across the border from Portland, Oregon, sell the most marijuana in the state. Today, we learned that after three months of being legal, Spokane County has raised $3.6 million in sales from uh, in out-of-state sales, totaling, I'm sorry, pardon me, Spokane County has rucked up $3.6 million in sales out of statewide sales totaling $14 million, much of it from bordering Idaho. Quote, Idahoans, they come in for a quick stop, Logan McDermott, a Spokane pot retailer, told KHQ-TV. Idahoans make up about 25% of our clientele. McDermott said nearly 100 people do business at his shop each day. Uruguay is struggling to roll out commercial production and sale of marijuana, and its groundbreaking experiment could be dropped or watered down if an opposition candidate wins this month's presidential election. Uruguay needs to work out how to ensure criminal gangs do not finance producers, how to regulate the supply and quality of locally produced marijuana, and how to satisfy neighboring states that legally grown dope will not be sold illegally on their streets. The government has missed its own deadlines in implementing the changes that were passed into law last December. The plan to start selling marijuana in pharmacies late this year year looks unlikely as the government is still tendering cultivation licenses and identifying where seeds can be purchased from. Given the delays, leftist president Jose Mujica now faces a race against time to push through the changes before the country's next leader takes office in March. This has been your 420 Radio News for Monday, October 20th, 2014. I'm Russ Belville.